I decided to go to Japan for the first time ever with my friends, mainly as a way to split up visa stuff. But I've also always just wanted to go to Japan, you know, being a VTuber slash weeb and all. <laughs> thanks to you guys and my overworkaholic nature, I was able to make this dream a reality, so thank you. This trip was pretty crazy for me. Even if we didn't do the craziest things or activities, I just enjoyed adventuring with friends and fashion hunting and eating good food. It also helped me in a lot of ways, just being out of my shell a little and making me solo travel around and overcome a part of my social anxiety. So I hope you enjoy the very little footage I recorded. Hashtag sorry, I'm really bad at vlogging. Testing, should be working, sick. Um, my dumbass did not realize that uh, I meant to book in at like 4 p.m. at my place and it's like, what, like three now? So I'm just kind of wandering around looking for places to buy clothes and stuff. And I'm deciding to go to uh, Asakusa Rocks, which is meant to be like a mall with a bunch of stuff. I have no idea what we're gonna find. Um, hopefully some cool clothes, but they've also got like a CD store and stuff. We'll see what we can get. Might be something cool. And this is where I start yapping, because anxiety and AD doesn't end the recordings. These were some really cute wallets I found in a store in Rocks. Pretty much everything we're about to see is from stores inside of Rocks. These clothes are pretty cool, pricey, but cool. But the main reason I recorded these is the cute wallpaper behind. Holy fucking shit, now this store. This store was fucking sick. I loved most of the clothing in this store, even though it was quote unquote women's clothing. The prints, colors, how the clothes folded, the fabric, just the overall aesthetic. Like, dude, these were so clean. And this is the first store I'd been in. If anything, I'm just sad they were mad pricey and none of them would hell of it me. I don't even know what this is. I think I was trying to get a nice aesthetic shot of the temple on the way back to my hotel, but unfortunately, current Zero hasn't learned elite camera skills yet. Wait a minute! Speaking of hotel, this is my cube. Yes. I stayed in a cube for 8 nights, which honestly, I was insanely anxious about at first, but it ended up being a really nice experience, cause it was quiet, clean, nobody bothered each other, and since it was such a nice experience, I low-key left a lot of skincare stuff just in my cube on the table instead of putting it away, don't do that, it's bad low-key. This is us on our first night, walking around and trying to find somewhere we'd like to eat. We were low-key indecisive and walked around for a bit, but finally we decided on this place. We got katsu, shrimp, veggies, and eel. The eel's the big long one and it was so fucking good. I don't know what they do to the batter in Japan, but it hits so much better than anything in Thailand or Australia. It's crazy. Day 2, we went to Harajuku for fashion stuffs and holy shit. Some of the clothing and fashion there was insane, but sadly I didn't record much because a lot of places didn't allow cameras. We also stopped by this ramen place called Aferi. The wait was long as fuck, but honestly, worth it. We also went to Meiji Shrine since it was nearby and it was honestly really pretty. I did record some stuff, but... <laughs> I have no idea where that footage went. We then ate some more at a place called Okonoma Miyaki Yayai, and then we finished the night at Bar Atarime in Asakusa. Day 3. I woke up and had coffee and some food by the river in Asakusa, which was honestly really nice. Just kinda windy. Today we were heading to Hakusan Shrine because I heard there was a Hydrangea festival and I really wanted to go. Hydrangeas are incredibly beautiful and honestly one of my favorite flowers. So I'm really happy I was fortunate enough to be in Japan just in time for this festival. After the festival, we started making our way to Akihabara. We realized we were going the wrong way because I chose the wrong turn. 
Finally, Akihabara. It was hella busy, but not as busy as it can get apparently. There was honestly everything, which makes sense. Lots of Miku, Bochi, JJK, and a wild Maido lookalike. We even found V Shoujo stuff, and really fucking cool From Software merch that I didn't end up getting because it was pricey as fuck. Also, uh, we also found soup. Then we went around and played some crane games, and expectedly, I didn't win anything. But we also played some arcade games like the punching machine, which I also sucked at. Feel free to make fun of my ass punching. Soup. More soup. After everything, we got a bit hungry, so we set out to get some food, which was actually a bit harder than we expected because everything was really busy at this hour. We ended up trying another place before eating here, but that place was full, so we walked all the way back. The food ended up being good and tasty, so I don't think we can complain. We also found bocce candy in a family mart and ran into fucking Mudan late at night out of nowhere like hello? Day 4 was a chill relax day. I ended up not recording anything really except for this aesthetic night walk. Also, Among Us. What the fuck? It's actually among us. But I ended up getting some pics of coffee, really nice cakes. By the way, the cheesecake was really good, definitely go here. And then we had sushi at the end of the day because I wanted to eat a lot of sushi. It was really good by the way, I just wish I could have blown more on it, not gonna lie. Day 5, we went thrifting, let's fucking go! Yeah, yeah, baby! That's, that's what we've been waiting for, for. that's, that's what it's all about! We went to multiple bookos, which are like big thrift stores full of everything. Clothes, CDs, more anime stuff, and even some crazy designer stuff. All for an insanely cheap price. Sometimes. And thanks to Mado finding them, I ended up getting Addo albums. As a lunch break, we had soup from a random place in a mall and it was kinda mid, not gonna lie. But then we had these takoyaki balls and they were fucking amazing. I'm not gonna lie, I burnt the shit out of my mouth eating those. We ended up ending the day eating at a place near our hotels and it was as good as it looks. Day 6 was cold and rainy. As a result, I didn't record much. <laughs> Definitely not an excuse. But we did get a lot of photos once again and recorded some nice street lights late at night in Yokohama's Chinatown. We were meant to go to an onsen place, but those plans fell through. So instead we went into Yokohama World Porters. And we had these interesting waffles which ended up being okay overall. We then headed over to the Yokohama Brick Warehouse, which the interior of this place was really cool with the big iron doors and exposed brick everywhere. And the stores had some cool stuff too, like Moomins. We ate some very nice cakes and coffee and before leaving saw this tea vending machine that looked like fake cigarettes. <laughs> We then headed to Chinatown to eat some more good food and also just see the really pretty street lights at night which was definitely worth it. Also we got Mado mukbang and he made me eat the last little bun. Mm -hmm. I know you do, come on. Team Labs Planet. That's what we did today. We went to Team Labs Planet Art Exhibition and it was incredible. The exhibition is crazy because not only do you see cool things, but you're meant to experience it with your entire body. Smell, touch, hearing, and sight are all a part of the art. Like you literally have to walk in water in some parts. It's a really cool experience and I definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested. I also may have forgotten to go to the Gundam that was nearby after Team Labs. But I got to see stupid go-kart tourists on the way back, which was funny. Wow! 
We went to a Junji Ito exhibition, showcasing his works and even original panels, sketches, and storyboards, which was fucking sick. I haven't read a lot of Junji personally, some bits here and there, but whenever I do or I see his work, it's always incredibly twisted and creative. They also had fortune cards, and well, unlucky as usual. Then did some window shopping around, and ended the night at the JoJo bar! Day 9 was probably my favorite day, because for a limited time, Ado did a collaboration with Kurasushi. We could get limited time merch from selected stores when you spent certain amounts on food. And I love Ado and Sushi, so you already know your boy had to lock in. After filling ourselves with sushi and Ado themed foods, we went to an arcade and played VR on Taiko. We then finished the day eating really good curry at this little hidden gem. And with that, it was all over. This trip is gonna fill up a lot of core memories for me. Never in my life did I think I'd be able to have such amazing friends, let alone travel with them to do cool things in Japan. It still doesn't even feel real. Japan itself was beautiful, along with the people. I feel this trip made me ready for a lot more things in the future. It helped me realize that I need to step out of my comfort zone again. Whether it be streaming ideas I'm anxious about, or just asking friends to hang. I don't want to stop myself from creating more memories like these, even if I stumble a little along the way. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed being on this adventure with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye!